Hello, welcome to the Monday, July 11th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Of course, this week I am at Sands Fire here teaching our Defending Web Application class. We also do have some Internet Storm Center themed events here in the evening, most notably our Tuesday keynote, which will be sort of a walkthrough through everything we have to offer at the Internet Storm Center in terms of data. This keynote will be streamed live. It will happen here in Washington, D.C., at 7 p.m. So that's the U.S. Eastern uh, Daylight Savings uh, Time. And uh, I'll add a link uh, to register for the respective webcast for the live stream uh, then uh, with uh, the show notes. And of course, as usual, if you are here in person, we'll have uh, stickers and such uh, at uh, that keynote as well. We are also planning on a little bit sort of a workshop after the keynote to set up honeypots, uh, at least uh, within a virtual machine. And in diaries today, a great, a very brief diary actually uh, by a Guy about extracting URLs from an Emotet sample. One of those little kind of uh, handy uh, things to know to make life easier easier for you. CyberChef, of course, you can either run it within GitHub or just download it and run it on your own system. After all, well, it's just a real well done a bunch of JavaScript. Well, in earlier this year, the security community kind of rejoiced when Microsoft announced that they will no longer allow users to execute macros in Office documents if the document was downloaded from the web. Of course, this was based on this mark of the web, which I talked about in the past a few times, and users were always able to remove that mark of the web and then still run macros if they absolutely insist. But uh, this added some additional hurdles for users to overcome, which made it much less likely for this very, very popular attack vector to succeed. However, well, uh, last week, Microsoft announced that it's reversing this uh, change and it will again allow users uh, to execute macros from files that were downloaded uh, via web browser or other means. The reason they're stating is that they had too many users essentially complain about not being able to execute macros that they need to execute. So it's one of those things where really the functionality, at least according to Microsoft, was important enough where at least temporarily they will not enable this as a default uh, configuration. However, administrators still have the option to set respective uh, group policy objects. So in short, don't throw out your user awareness training where you're talking about things like macros and documents downloaded from the internet. It's still important and yes, it may still be used as an attack vector. And QNAP is reporting that they are seeing some of their users being affected by the Checkmate ransomware. However, in order to be affected, you first of all need to expose SMB to the internet and then also, well, make sure that you are using strong passwords. Apparently here, it's either just uh, coming in via some old SMB1 vulnerabilities or just uh, via weak brute forced passwords. And probably at least once a week, I'm talking about some kind of malicious package being offered in any of the popular ecosystems like NPM or PyPy. Well, uh, PyPy is now trying to fight back. And the problem they're trying to address here is that a popular package may be taken over by a rogue developer and then malicious code may be injected into that package. To fix this, PyPy decided to issue free 
two-factor authentication tokens to the top 1% of its contributors. The solution they picked here was the Google Titan key. It's essentially WebAuth N they're implementing here. So a pretty solid standard. However, some of the developers are pushing back where they basically are saying that since they are just uh, freely contributing the code, they shouldn't really be subject to any mandatory requirements like this. We'll see how this all ends up, but overall, of course, uh, tightening the security around uh, these uh, packages certainly makes sense. Uh, GitHub, of course, with NPM has also taken some similar steps. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.